All right, folks, I am back to redo this video because the one that I created earlier and the one that I just already uploaded about that printer problem with the Pro 1 still had slight background hum and it was not due to AC because it's a cold kind of dank day today. The AC has not come on. So I've discovered a setting on my Zoom H1 that I applied I just uploaded a video just not even minutes ago that gave you a comparison between those settings turned off and those settings turned on. And we'll see if that finally improves the audio problems that we were having. All right, now sublimation printing. Why did I get involved in this? Well, originally I was trying to come up with some merchandise to sell and this has kind of been a failure for me. I did send out a lot of feelers Hey, do you guys want me to create a t-shirt? And everyone said yes, but I've only sold two t-shirts. Okay, maybe three t-shirts. And it's been months and months. I've only sold a couple of mugs. I sold one complete set of a mug, t-shirt, coaster, and mouse pad to a young lady from Pennsylvania, and she's loving it. And she says that there's nothing gone wrong with the merchandise she has washed the t-shirt she has cleaned her cup and nothing has gone wrong so it is a good quality product and again i don't understand why it has not really become very popular i thought everybody would want to have one of these to put on at least even to just go to bed in okay happy printing everybody that is my line folks cmyk right here anyway this is sublimation printing. This is what I got into now. Even though I'm a little depressed that this has not taken off, actually I am very happy still because I was able to discover not only beyond just sublimating to a t-shirt, a polyester t-shirt, I come to realize that this has almost unlimited possibilities. Yes, so now I'm very excited, even though I wish I could sell more of these types of products. And I'll show you what these are in a minute. But basically sublimation, which is the process of a solid becoming a gas without going through the liquid state. In the winter, when you get a lot of ice buildup, and all of a sudden you get a very cold, below freezing, but a very sunny day, the ice will sublimate to a vapor, to water vapor, without melting. It'll just begin to disappear without actually melting, especially if you have a little bit of wind to help it along. But with this type of process, basically you start with a special type of ink. You have to assign an Epson printer or buy a ready-made printer like the Sawgrass 400 or 800, which are really made by Rico. They come with their own proprietary cartridges and they're rather large. I think they're even maybe 110 ml. So they do last you a long time. I have taken one of my old printers. It's a Workforce 1100. It just uses magenta, yellow, and cyan and two black cartridges. And I bought a cis unit for it. And I am using that for my sublimation printing on transfer paper. What is transfer paper? Well, it's not just photo paper. Well, it's not photo paper whatsoever. Just like the inks are not regular photo ink, they are specialized. This paper allows the solid ink, once it dries on the paper, what you have printed, it is now solid. And with the application of high heat, up to like 400 degrees, and a certain amount of time, that ink, that is now a solid, sublimates into a vapor, directly into a polyester substrate, whether it is a t-shirt, a mug, a coaster, or whatever. In the case of photography, I'll show you a couple of those later that I'm going to show you a surprise right here. So I first learned to do this simply by watching a bunch of videos on YouTube. That is the source for learning. And I began to print on scraps of polyester material. And I went ahead and bought a couple of yards of that at the local store. And so that allowed me to practice to get the timing down pat get the proper temperature set and the pressure and so on because there's so many variables 
involved. And this type of shirt feels like cotton. It does feel like cotton. And yet it is polyester. It doesn't have that polyester feel. And it's sublimating beautifully, as you can see. Extremely, extremely strong transfer. Now, if you're going to do a mug, and everybody's doing mugs, you can find these at all the gift shops. All you got to do to realize if it's sublimated is to actually run your finger over. If you feel anything, a little relief of the application of, say, ink via whatever the process, then it's not sublimation. This is absolutely seamless and smooth. And again, this cup has been professionally coated with polyester, clear. And the transfer, when it is applied, literally bonds with the molecules becoming a compound. So the, the polyester itself becomes dyed. And so once it is encapsulated, you can wash this till the cows come home. So far, I think I've washed this about maybe 50 times. So there you go. It's very, very durable. This has been washed numerous times as well. It looks nicely folded, but this is because it doesn't deteriorate at all. This is one that I've been wearing. And I washed this maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 times already. Here are the coasters that I've been making. Now these, you don't buy pre-coated. These you go to the home center and you buy regular tiles. You need to obtain a special gloss clear polyester coating. You can use a brush, not recommended, or a sprayer. That's what I recommend that you do. And again, look at the surface, very smooth. I actually used a airbrush. And then after I apply my relatively even coat, I go over it very lightly with a quick coat of just plain distilled water, just the mist. And that tends to break up any kind of little bubbles that may have occurred on the surface. You get a very, very even smooth surface. You let it dry, you cure it. I'm using a toaster oven, 350 degrees for about 15 minutes. Just load as many as you can in there, so as long as they don't touch each other, you can go ahead and bake them, so to speak, until they are cured, cool them down. Now, when you sublimate to something like this, because of the thickness, it takes a much longer time. The enemy of sublimation, of course, is moisture. Moisture will prevent the process from taking place. And just to show you how the gas is actually bleeding through, I want you to take a look at the edge. You see how it's bleeding through? This edge has been coated as well, but because it's sitting literally on the transfer paper as it's being pressed, as the gases begin to permeate through the coating, you can see them kind of leaching their way into the side coating itself. But again, the photographic quality of this is tremendous. It's just beautiful, as you can see, this is the matching one for my mug here. I made the cute little chihuahua. I actually downloaded that graphic from Google Images. I did one with a regular image just to see how it would come out, something a little bit more subdued, and that came out gorgeous. So you can see now in the back, I'm using little adhesive felt tabs just to keep everything nice and smooth. I got the same thing going on here. Here I used some silicone little tabs or little blobs. This is one for Nathan. Of course, a big old steam locomotive steaming up to go on a night ride. And the back, as you can see now. On the one coaster where the surface has been coated with cork, I found out something really, really strange. Apparently, when they manufacture this sheet cork, the adhesive used contains polyester. So, you can actually sublimate to this. So I could take the cork before I attach it and sublimate my logo if I am actually producing these for sale, to sell at a gift shop or whatever. All right, so I'm gonna show you some of the aluminum prints. This is eight by 12, very surreal looking image. It's not a black and white, actually it's a RGB file in color. I just edited it out of all the color and I added a little bit of yellow and the effect is done through layers, blurring actions, and that type of thing. Here's a sand clock. Beautiful. The color is unbelievable, folks. I'll leave those there. These 
eight by 12 I have bought off of eBay, relatively low cost. I've got a fingerprint on this. This is so glossy that it actually leaves a lot of marks from your hands. You gotta be careful. Now for mounting these, this is what you can buy commercially, okay, from Condi. Aluminum plate already carved out, cut out, routed, whatever I think they use, laser cutters. Piece of MDF, about half an inch thick, double adhesive tape, you attach it to the back and you hang it up on a nail and this then pops away from the wall, half an inch, the little, I think that's like five by five piece of aluminum, keeps it nice and even and parallel to the wall. And so this is one very good way to mount these and to display them. This is another type of sublimatable aluminum. This is called Chromalux, and Chromalux is fantastic. This is the satin Chromalux. It is so smooth. I don't know how they apply the coating. I have no clue what kind of machinery they use, but it produces perfect, perfect mirror-like finishes on things like this. This is the glossy, which is way too glossy for me. And this is my wife. This is a landscape. And this is actually really nice. I got about 50 sheets of this. Cost me about $100, so about $2 a sheet. But anyway, to hang these up, I don't have one here, but I originally made a frame of wood. And then I thought, hmm, I'll just go out and see if I can find some. Well, I couldn't. They were not reasonably priced. So I went to Amazon and I found half inch wide, by half inch thick, flat black molding little frames. Very simple. Again, flat front, flat back. So I took the glass out and I then glued that to the back of one of these prints. That was perfect. But then I was left with some glass. What do I do? Well, I put it away until I got kind of a little bit of a light bulb go on. But let me tell you what my friend Mike Cheney, the owner of QImage, made for me. These are 3D printed little hangers. They have the little buttons that are about half inch thick. They allow the print to pop away from the wall, keep them parallel so that they are displayed as floating prints. And he created these on his 3D printer for me. Sent me a little pack of them and uh, wonderful. I may have to get into this 3D printing uh, thing myself. You can just about make anything, I, apparently. So anyway, so let me show you what I made. I took that sheet of glass and I almost showed you here. It almost slipped away. I took that sheet of glass, cleaned it perfectly. Then I applied alcohol to the surface to make sure that there was no grease, anything that would prevent the poly coat from adhering to it. I sprayed it with my airbrush. I applied a very light mist of water, let it dry. It sat perfectly level. It all flattened out. Once it was dry, I baked it in my toaster oven, 15 minutes at 350. Then I printed this file. You've seen this before. I have one right there of it and it came out beautiful. Now, as you can see, the edges are darker. The reason that is, is because the edges didn't sublimate. They were not touching anything that had polyester on it. Therefore, they remain dark. The lighter portion is what transfer over to the polyester coating that I applied to that glass. And when you do this sort of thing, you have to cover something that is non-porous like glass, aluminum, that sort of thing. Believe it or not, a lot of moisture attaches itself to it. And so I had to preheat my, my coated glass until I didn't see any more moisture on it. It really builds up the paper collects moisture as well. So I had this like this. With the transfer on top, this was covering it this way. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a ghosting effect on it. Now, here's what we got. Sheet of glass coated with a poly coat against a white background, just a sheet of paper. Now, how would you present this? Well, you don't want to present it over a sheet of white paper. 
because normally it looks like this, really a transparency basically. So this is the coated side. This is where the image transferred to. This is the front. This is the part you would polish. So what I'm thinking of doing is spraying the back with a white enamel, something that will not react with the poly coat. I need to experiment to see what sort of white finish. It could be matte, it could be glossy. It doesn't really matter, but what type of finish that is white will not have an adverse reaction, okay? I did one already earlier and it did have an adverse reaction. I used a white primer. It did not like the poly coat, okay? So I need to go to the store and check out what kind of sprays they have. Now I have some white poly coat, so maybe I will use that. Poly coat is the name of the product that I use to coat these. Now poly coat does not sublimate to, it's just like a primer, like a white regular kills i think the brand is primer they have diluted it to the correct working condition or consistency and what you need to do to apply it as a pre-coat say you're coating a piece of mdf on the smooth side masonite so you apply the white poly coat that poly coat has to be mixed seven parts poly coat one part poly coat clear and then one ml of catalyst mix all that up really nice let the bubbles go away and then apply a couple of coats of that onto your substrate. Let that dry. Apply the gloss coat on top of that. Let that dry and then cure it and then you can sublimate back to it. So since I don't have to sublimate again, I don't think it's necessary to go through all of those steps. I'm just going to apply the plain poly coat, which again is just plain kills type primer that you buy at your home center. So that should give you a very bright white background that should really work wonderfully with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that tonight and see how that works out. I'm gonna apply with a brush and see if that is smooth enough. I hope it works. If it doesn't and I try to remove it, it might mess up the coated, already sublimated section of this. So that is it. I hope you enjoy this. I hope the audio is better than it has been. Uh, this has to be solved again. I really don't want you guys to have to sit through bad audio. I mean, my video quality, I think, is about as good as it's going to get with my action camera. I'm shooting at 2K now instead of a regular 1080p, so that should improve matters a little bit. This gives me a little bit of latitude to be able to zoom in digitally as well. So in case I want to emphasize something that I am putting in front of the camera. So that is it. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe share and like and until the next time as always happy printing everybody please buy my shirt and my mugs no i'm kidding bye bye